Thank you. Um, so I'm a little different perspective here. I, I'm, uh, we are fans of Mesos, uh, Lightbin. We use a lot of the open source technologies those companies are built upon. We're more of an application provider though. So we have built our own architecture um, to support document processing. So I don't have a lot of slides up here. Um, you can actually go ahead to the next slide. But by way of introduction, like Alexi said, I'm director of platform engineering at Nitro, which means I own basically all of our online services. Um, we were born out of a PDF software company, a desktop software company, and we still own a lot of that. So what do we do to make documents smarter? And what does that mean? Like really what we're trying to do is unlock the intelligence that exists in a document. Um, you open a PDF, you open a document, you understand what the document is, you understand what the workflow is, you understand who needs to see that document, where it came from, a machine doesn't. Um, and you talk about knowledge workers in large organizations that do thousands of documents a day, you could really save them a lot of time if you were able to unlock some of that intelligence in a document and help them derive what they need to do with that document or inform them a little bit. So that's really what we're trying to do at Nitro. Um, and the core of our platform is built in Scala. Um, we have, a, and we use Akka, Kafka. We actually run it on Mesos. We're in Mesos Singularity. We have an open source um, version of that. Um, we actually contribute to it a little bit as well. Um, but at the core of what we're doing, I, I wanted to talk to you, this meetup really about the challenges we face. I mean, I know it's an AI meetup. Data is a huge part of AI. Documents have a lot of data in it, and we encounter a lot of challenges with documents. Um, first and foremost, um, documents are largely unstructured. There's no context in them. There's no derived information in that document that you can understand. Most of the documents we come across are just built um, to render on a screen. So you lose all context of what's in that document. So trying to interpret what's in that document and, and make sense of it is, is a challenging problem. They come on all shapes, sizes, images, not images. I mean, we do a lot of stuff there. And what we have, basically what that boils down to is we have an asynchronous load problem. Some things take a short time to process, sometimes things take a long time to process, but we have a customer waiting on a website for a document to process. We have to be able to predict how it's going to process, how we're going to be able to interpret that document. Um, other things that we're really concerned about is we're dealing with very sensitive corporate documents here. Um, we have no open source corpus of documents to train on. None whatsoever. Uh, Wikidata, Wikipedia data does not work. We have uh, free sites to use. That data does not work. When you're trying to train an AI algorithm on corporate documents, uh, you have to go to the corporations and get those documents, which leads to another problem we have, privacy. Um, we're dealing with sensitive information. We have healthcare companies. We have all of these companies that we're working for and working on behalf of. So it's great that we have a platform to do it, Getting the data into the platform to train is a very difficult problem and one that, you know, I think early in the days of Nitro, when I, I joined a couple of years ago, we totally underestimated, I'll be very honest with you. And so we're working on that now. Um, and a lot of our focus right now is actually on privacy. Um, I, for people that do business in the EU, there's the uh, general data privacy rules that are about to go into effect in 2018 in May. If you're doing anything with machine learning, personalization, ad tech, pay attention to those rules because they will really affect how you operate in the EU. Um, I can talk more about that later. I can do a long talk on that, <laughs> but it's something that we're very concerned about. Um, and then, you know, just what we're doing is CPU intensive, so that's where the distributed architecture comes in. Um, we have to distribute load across a bunch of servers. We use containers. We use Akka to distribute that load. We, we do it through Kafka as well, and we run everything in, in Mesos. So that's really, you know, some of the challenges we face. So, you know, paint kind of a bleak picture there of what we do, but, you know, how we overcome some of those challenges. Well, I just mentioned the architecture. Like, um, we were one of the first people to sign the Reactive Manifesto. We are firm believers in a reactive architecture. And it's actually really saved our rear ends quite a bit. Um, uh, when you're do processing documents, it's really nice to be able to scale your architecture if you get large documents in. Or you have, uh, we actually have SLAs with customers, so some of our customers have a higher SLA than others. So we can scale that architecture based on the SLA and the customer. Um, and so there's some really interesting problems that we, we solve with our architecture there. Um, and then, you know, it really boils down to, you know, 
processing those documents. Like I said, we have a bunch of worker nodes underneath the scenes and you know, uh, then storing that data and securing that data. Um, and I'll be very honest with you, we have no AI um, in Nitro right now. We, we're experimenting with it, but let's not overlook good old fashioned heuristics when you're processing a document. Um, and it, it really works. It's faster than deep learning right now for us. Um, we are very aware of algorithms and neural networks that are out there that do this, but we have IP that's 10 years old written in C that uses heuristics of 99, it's basically a, an algorithm of 99 different heuristics to process a document and inter interpret what's in that PDF, and it's faster and more reliable than a lot of what's out on the market. So, um, you know, sometimes when you're looking at these solutions and looking at these things, don't overlook the simple solution, is kind of what I'm saying, and pay attention to the data, the privacy that's in your data. Um, and this is just my perspective as a company using, um, using these tools and everything like that, um, but architecture is key, and having an architecture that you can scale out to solve these problems down the road is very key. So, you know, just start there with the distributed architecture, make things reactive, and um, that's kind of the lesson we've learned here. And then, as you get into experimentation, natural language processing is a very, uh, well-known field. There's a lot of tools out there. That's the tools that we would end up using eventually. Um, you know, if you're using neural networks, you're going to want to turn a document into a word vector at some point. There's Glove, there's word to vec to do that. They all work with TensorFlow. Um, Stanford's got Corel NLP if you want to do some basic like entity recognition, semantic analysis, things like that. Berkeley's got some great tools in their NLP group as well. So those are things that we're experimenting with, but you'll see none of that in production. Um, but if you need a, just a free document processing solution or free e-signatures, go to cloud.gonitro.com. Feel free to use a service, sign up. It's totally free for everybody. Um, but with that, um, I'm sorry, I've got to run. I can't hang around for questions, but my Twitter handle's up here, um, and uh, Alex will send out my information. So. Feel free to follow up with me and I'll be happy to talk about any of this from a user's perspective or a, an application developer's perspective. Um, so thank you.